election 2011 coverage on Manx Radio. Welcome to election coverage. Now reaching the end of five years as a politician and going once again for the seat of Malou and Santon is Graham Crugine, who joins us in the studio. Good morning, Mr. Crugine. Good morning, John. Uh, married two children, worked for the post office before winning the seat five years ago. He promised then to be a full-time MHK and not fit business commitments or directorships around government responsibilities. You've certainly gained experience in government. <laughs> You've been in all sorts of departments, so no problem for you to be part of the current administration, I presume, is it? Well, I, I, when you when you're working in departments, you, you try and achieve some of the, the goals that you want you've put forward, and it's also questioning other government departments, and it gives you an insight on how things work, and then it gives you the opportunity to be able to question departments on what they've done. Because you started off in agriculture, where you had a responsibility for fisheries. I mean, that was the private fishing, um, inland fishing, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was, and we brought in the uh, extended closed area of Port Erin, and yeah. all sorts of things. T tourism and infrastructure. Let's go back to tourism, because you left tourism with under a bit of a cloud yourself. And Mr. Turner, why exactly did you quit that department? Well, the issue came about was that uh, they were trying to appoint somebody to a position in the TTF Mag Group. Which, without advertising it, and I'd brought it up in the department with Mr. Turner and some of the officers, and uh, we were all told, oh, it's got nothing to do with the department, and nobody seemed to know anything about it, and there was a political meeting held in the, the Tinwell buildings where we questioned uh, the Home Affairs Minister at the time about this appointment. And, uh, so you were unhappy with the appointment, basically? It was, and it's not. it wasn't the person, it was a way that they were going about it. They hadn't advertised it, it was like a, a, a retired so officer. So was that a reason to quit that responsibility? Oh, I, I didn't quit, I was fighting my corner. The minister didn't like me fighting. So you it. were fired? I was. You were fired. Uh, right, well, <laughs> that was in tourism. Uh, at the beginning of your time, I think, in tourism, you were in on the bus network review. Yes, and it's been real disappointing because what we started off on the bus network was to actually have consultation and I think if you talk to Travel Watch and a lot of the people involved during my time there we consulted with people about the way forward and then after I left it seems to have all fallen apart. They you must have been quite glad to sidestep it though because it was a thorny issue it's pro proved a thorny issue for Brenda Cannell um, etc so you must have been quite glad you were able to put it behind you. No because I think we were actually getting somewhere what I feel is that we'd started that initial consultation with the people asking people what they wanted and then they've drawn up a timetable and, and not done any further consultation. I think if they would have done more consultation, asked the people if these services fitted what they wanted and then came out with a, a more definitive one, it would have worked. On Iris, the Iris scheme, you described it uh, five years ago as a disgrace. Many areas smelling like open sewers. Is it any better now? It is. And I've worked with um, the Department of uh, Transport at the time. Uh, Peter Wynne Stanley and David Quirk. Because you're in infrastructure now, aren't you? I am so now. So you're in a position to do something about this? Well, it's been sought to touch wood for the last um, two years, and you know my constituents in the area have said that there's been very little smell from it, and they've actually started to achieve what they should have done. But it's keeping the pressure on them. So you to brought make sure the sweet smell of success with you? Well, <laughs> well, one it is, is to make sure that you, you keep the pressure on them to make sure it doesn't. And as soon as anybody smells something, down there, I've always said to them, phone me up and I've, I can have a 24-hour contact within that department to chase them up to sort it out. You weren't very keen on the airport extension five years ago. You said it should be looked at very carefully. Are you happier with it now? It makes you wonder when you see the figures that they were saying that, that we were going to come through to the Isle of Man. A million people... It was on the cost basis you weren't happy. It was cost basis. It was also that the airlines hadn't been uh, signed up to it. And that was one of the reasons that I was uh, against it, was they hadn't got the airlines on board. They were given the consultants, I think at the time, 10%, which, uh, which so they reduced. you're still unhappy about that? It's a lot of money. I'm, I, I, I voted for it because the things that I asked for they gave me. They gave me the assurance that the airline said that they required it and they reduced the cost to so the consultants. So ticked some of your boxes. Efficient residency control. The present open door policy you're unhappy with. I uh, think, yes, I think what we've got to do is tighten up on, on, the, on the work permit issue because, you know, people come to me and say, well, a person's come under a certain category to work in the Isle of Man. They change their job and another partner gets another job and then there's all these other people that follow in on the, on the initial work permit. And I'm not against... It should be tightened up. It should be, and, and there should be more enforcement on it. Accountable and open government. Well, you're part of the government now. Have you been accountable, Mr Crudy? I think I have. A, I, Approachable? I think... Everyone can get in touch with you? Oh, yes. My, you know, You've I... tell, told everyone everything about your meetings? 
I, I, I go out and tell people where I am. I go and drop newsletters off when there's anything. But part of the thing that I was on about... Do account- you sworn to secrecy as part of the government? No, you're not certain sworn. issues. Not, no, you're not sworn. To, on, on some issues, it's sensitive, which you don't really... You've got so to be you are really sworn kept. on certain issues? On certain issues, you've got to, Anybody who says that you're doing a business deal and you, they let you know what's happening, you have to be very careful that you don't let the opposition know what you're doing. We'll have to close it there. Mr Grigene, thank you for joining us. You're listening to Mandate, where it's 8 o'clock.